Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and this is Angling Escapades. Hi and welcome to another edition of Anglin Escapades video blog. You join me once again on the banks of the beautiful River Wye. Uh, and uh, conditions really, well we're in summer conditions. Um, the river looks beautiful, we've got lots of weed growth, uh, lots of fry, lots of hatches everywhere, fish topping. Um, it's a wonderful scene. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's not ideal for salmon. We need uh, we need some fresh water now to bring some more fish into the system. It's uh, it's hard everywhere at the moment. No one's really uh, catching lots of fish. Um, but ultimately, you've still got to get out there and have a go. And uh, in all fairness, with conditions as they are, uh, it's not a bad place to be. The other thing I like at this time of year is I like getting out on the river because now you're seeing the weed beds, you're seeing the clear bottom. And now I think a lot of the fish have spawned and you're seeing uh, barbel and chub and you're starting to point your eyes towards June the 16th when the river season opens for the coarse fish. And uh, we'll start hunting these chub and barbel again. Um, and I've seen, I've been out this morning, I've seen some, some barbel sort of turning in the current and that sort of thing. Great sign, great to watch as well. Um, but the river's just alive with everything. You look in the, in the margins, there's fry everywhere. Um, fish, I say fish topping, so it's great. Recently, uh, I say conditions haven't been good for a few weeks now. We've had a couple of little rises in the river, but there's been an odd salmon coming through the river, but uh, nothing like um, what you'd want, really. Um, there's lots of moans and groans, and people are quite depressed about the whole situation. Uh, for, for myself, I only know the river as it is. It's never been easy. And um, there's lots of, lots of reasons why the salmon fishing probably isn't that good, um, but all you can do is keep trying uh, and keep trying to to tackle the things that, uh, that matter uh, and help these fish uh, to survive in the river uh, and reproduce. So this episode, what I'm going to basically do, I promised that I'd have a look at some, some of the equipment we use for the salmon. So I'm going to concentrate mainly on one thing, uh, and that's bait. Uh, when I was a youngster uh, fishing with, with my dad on the river, uh, the main bait for salmon fishing, uh, spinning wise, was, was a Devon minnow, uh, these little floating wooden Devon minnows that's had fins and they, they spin in the current and they'd, you'd fish them across a pool and uh, hopefully catch the salmon's attention and that's, you know, that's what the majority of salmon were caught on then that weren't fly caught. Um, in the last 20 years or so, the bait that's become prominent is the fly in sea. Now, fly in sea, um, this is a fly in sea, okay, now the word fly in sea basically derives from uh, flying condom, okay, because originally it was a piece of perfect uh, natural latex uh, and it had a, a blade on it, I think MEPS were the first people to make them, had a, a blade on it which would spin, okay, around, around the rubber body and that spinning effect with that shape as it goes through the water, um, probably a, something similar to a, a shrimp or a prawn at sea or something like that, but the, the salmon kind of found that irresistible. Um, and this now, these baits, uh, the, these account for the, the majority of salmon caught on this river. Um, whatever the reason, uh, they're effective. They can be a bit controversial. People seem to have a bit of a problem with them at the moment. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think, you know, they, they, they catch salmon. There's still a lot of skill involved. You've still got to put them in the right areas. You've still got to fish them at the right speed. You've still got to get that blade turning. Um, but um, I, I think they're a great bait and I like fishing them because it's really quite a spectacular thing to fish when you catch a salmon because this blade is spinning and you've always got tension on the rod as you're spinning it back. And if a fish comes and hits it, all that tension goes it's like and the only way i can describe it is if you're with regards to coarse fishing if you're ever fishing a feeder and you get a massive violent drop back bite that's just what it's like on these the, the blade top stops spinning the salmon hit it hard and uh, it's game on and it's the most exciting exciting split second um in fishing 
So these come in, in a different, different varieties, different shapes and styles, different colours. Um, these ones are all made by a uh, famous gilly on the river, probably the most famous gilly on the river, uh, Lynn Cobbley. Uh, I'm lucky enough that I go fishing with Lynn each week um, and I'm, I'm slowly learning a, a lot about salmon fishing. Um, Lynn makes these himself, has done for years, and he sells them worldwide. And um, you go to different parts of the country, and I go to Scotland, and they fish them differently. They have smaller bodies. Um, I've got some here somewhere. They have a smaller body, and uh, they catch. Uh, they tend to catch running fish, you know. So they're they're perhaps fishing these a lot quicker, and they fish it with a with a much smaller. That's one that I got from Scotland. Okay, so that's a a yellow with a silver. But you can see the difference in size and the blades on those. Okay, and they are slightly different and, and when you go to Scotland and that they fish these a lot quicker and they'll say fish fish it quickly and scoot it across just under the surface and um, and I think that's because they're fishing for running fish. Here on the Y we're fishing a lot more fish that are, are lay in what we call lies or takes where they'll be lay up against a rock or um, you know lay in a, a gully or something and you've got to fish you've got to be able to pass this above above their eye line really and that's why with the, the big blade allows you to just to hold it in the current a bit longer and that blade you only have to hold it against the current and that blade will keep spinning and keep spinning round and it just it's just enough to flutter in front of the uh, in front of the salmon's face and really get that reaction so different parts of the country different parts of the world you'd fish these differently different sizes but on the y um these are these bodies are either an ounce or three quarters of an ounce so that you've basically got a lead body inside there or, or a weighted body inside there. This bead, free spinning blade, and a treble hook on there. Now, the controversy. Um, what's happening at the moment is there seems to be a lot of talk about bringing these flying seas in with a single hook, okay? So just on a single. So every spinner that you fish, whether it be a Meps, a Toby, um, a, a Devon Minnow, you fish on a treble hooks. Even a lot of fly fishing is done with treble hooks. For some reason, Everyone seems to have a problem with these having a treble hook. Now that, in comparison to a lot of treble hooks, isn't a massive treble hook. I think the argument is, is that salmon hit these hard and sometimes they swallow them down. Well, I've never had one swallow it down. When, when you're talking swallowing, I'm talking maybe in, in, on the inner mouth, not in the scissors, you know, around things. So um, I've never had a problem getting one out. Um, and I don't think, I don't believe they kill salmon. Uh, that seems to be the general uh, thing is that they get they get hooked too deeply and they damage the salmon and, and they don't. I, I don't have experience with that. In my experience, the reason why salmon die is because they're handled, mishandled or they've just had a hard time of it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible fight with the salmon and then at the end of it all, if you then take it up onto the bank and rub it around on the gravel or, or whatever and, and, and keep it out of its, its oxygenated water, then that's when they suffer in my opinion. So um, I, I don't really buy into this, this single hook thing. I don't think it makes a massive difference. Um, if I was using something that I felt was killing salmon, salmon needlessly, then I wouldn't use it. Simple as that. I've got no wish to kill a salmon at all. Um, so that's that's for people to argue. It's quite. I find it a bit hypocritical to be honest, because a lot of the people who are arguing for these single hooks are the people who were killing every fish that they caught back in the 70s and 80s when this river was full of salmon. So I find it. I find it a bit hypocritical, really. But um, each their own. And some places you go, they'll insist on a single hook. But uh, luckily, so far on the why it's uh, there's only certain beats that that um that ask for it and um it's not it's not something i want to see become more uh more prevalent so those are the flying seas like i say a lot of lots of different colors and lots of different shapes different blades silver blade copper blades and everybody has their favorite i have my favorite different conditions or you know and it's all just on going based on what you've caught fish on and like i say you go to different parts of the country or different parts of the world even and they fish them totally different but very effective bait now one thing uh, that cropped up now i did some underwater filming uh for this uh for these flying seats just to sort of try and portray how they react in the water and something became very apparent um is the noise that these make as they travel through the water now noise and fishing go hand in hand really uh, you, you you don't realize quite how much it's um 
it affects the fishing you're doing. Now, the obvious one for me is I do a lot of commercial fishing and there, you know, fish are used to bait going in the water. The splash of a float, the splash of a feeder will bring fish to your, you know, to your bait. Uh, so much so that when we're fishing on commercials, when we're trying to get shallow, we're, we're spinning a rig over and slapping a rig on the water to really attract fish. And certain fish, carp and F1s and things like that are very attractive. But even on the river, um, when you're feeding bait, you're catapulting bait, um, you know, onto the water when you're fishing for roach and dace and things like that, those fish will be coming to that noise after a while. Once they get, once they associate that that noise means there's feed coming into the water, then that's they'll come to that noise. Same with feeder fishing. Quite often, if you're regularly casting feeder, plopping it in the same place, feeder, you'll suddenly find that people your bites are coming pretty much straight away when it hits the water. If you don't have a bite within you know a minute or so, you're winding in and casting out again. So noise is very prevalent. But I'd never associated it with salmon fishing until I put these in the water and I filmed it. And luckily, the sound on the camera is quite good. Um, so just uh, just take a look at this. Just have a listen to this. Uh, these are the noise they make. So there you go, there's quite a bit of noise there. Uh, as that blade is, is, is circulating around that central wire, it's making a noise and, and it, it really hit home to me and I thought that is why these baits are so effective because visually they're good, but there's lots of baits that are visually good. I think uh, a Devon minnow spinning in the water is the most visually attractive thing there is, but it doesn't have the same noise as these. And I, and I can't help but think that, that is the reason that when these these lures are passing over the top of rocks and lies where salmon live. That that's um, that's part of the attraction. The noise is is aggravating them and that. So I found that utterly fascinating, and uh, and it just sort of uh, just just reaffirmed really how how effective these baits are. So that's flying seas. That's the majority. Obviously, we do a lot of fly fishing, and I like using different baits: tobies, Devon minnows, meps, whatever. But um, when you when you really want to catch it, when you think you've got only got one chance to catch a salmon. Um, this is the bait that I would turn to. So, river conditions. Like I say earlier, the river's low now. Um, we're starting to see some fish uh, that have spawned and uh, chub and barbel. And uh, at the moment, the weed grows good. We could do with avoiding too much of this hot, dry weather. I think uh, some rain now would really help things along um, and just keep the keep the water nice and oxygenated ready for the, the start of the new season. I'm already starting to look at pegs and places where we're going to be taking our guests out uh, in the new season. I'm going to be cutting out some pegs uh, in, in the next week or so and, and start baiting those up. Now, I'll do a, a separate blog on that, uh, just on, on, on cutting swims. It sounds quite like sim quite a simple process, uh, but there is an art to it and there's a way of doing it to make sure that you get the best out of that swim and also, you know, keep it to yourself maybe. So uh, look out for that. That'll be on the next blog. Um, I say conditions as they are, I'll be out a little bit salmon fishing over the next next week or so, but uh, I'm, it's more in, in hope than, uh, than than realistic chance. You know, we need to we need to see some rain and for some more fish to run. So I'll keep you uh, keep you updated. Well, I say we'll keep um, keep these coming weekly. Keep your questions coming. Um, I've got some questions which I'll bring on to the next vlog, which I never got a chance to do on this one. I don't want to make these too long. I made the last one a bit long, so uh, we'll we'll keep them quick, you know, short and sweet, informative, and hopefully interesting. So um, tight lines for the week ahead, and we'll see you next week.